sing that you bring to us for a chance to worship you through music and word. Uh, help our hearts with you and send your spirit upon us. Pray. All right. We got it on you. Can start, right? Oh, it is that, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I don't need it, so I can do it. All right, we got to start. Ready, Vince? Go. We're going to start. Jack, you can put the slides up for this first song. How fast do you want it? At least that fast that we were doing. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Good evening. Welcome to worship. Welcome to our Oasis service. This service originally was started so that we could uh, have communion for our confirmation students. So we're hoping to get them in worship along with their parents because we know their lives have been busy. So apparently we have some more shepherding to do. 
Sure nice to have all our musicians back in full force. You guys sound amazing. What a gift you are. Welcome back. Uh, welcome to anybody who might be guest or new uh, to this service. Uh, this service is every Wednesday night at 6.15. It's a briefer service, only usually 45 minutes, uh, but with uh, music, wonderful music, uh, God's Word, and Holy Communion. And so it's a, it's a real full, full service for, for those who can't make it Sunday and would like to, to uh, have a time during the week where they can stop and experience an oasis in the middle of the week, a time to take a breath, and a time to feel God's presence and feel some peace. And we hope to do that here tonight. And God promises he'll be here when we gather in his name, which we do. Welcome to those who are streaming online. Do we have anyone, Brad, tonight joining us? We've got a couple joining us. We've had a growing number of people. So uh, welcome. This service is here every week, and we hope you continue to enjoy it. A couple of announcements in our bulletin uh, this evening. Um, we have a blood drive going on. If you're interested in giving blood, you can check a box on this form, drop it in the offering plate, and we'll make sure you get invited when the blood drive comes. Um, we're looking for some help in the tech area back here, soundboard, uh, streaming, and video. Uh, we find that uh, young people do a great job of that. So if your young person has uh, a little bit of a, a knack for that, we'd sure love to have your help. Um, let us know. You can check the box on here. Drop it in the offering plate. So our service tonight is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit, starting out a little heavy here. We had a, a really uh, tragic loss this last week of a pastor. Uh, Pastor Stephanie Colvett Erdman. She was here for eight years, from 2006 to 2014, and uh, we we uh, heard that she'd had a, a massive cardiac arrest. And as she fell, she hit her head and had a had a bleed. And um, they didn't know about the bleed until they started treating the heart. And um, in in any case, things went from bad to worse. We were praying for her very. Fervently, um, but she succumbed and has gone home to be with the Lord. And the tragedy of it is, is, is that we've lost this incredible light in our world, this brilliant woman who shines so brightly. And she leaves a husband with uh, three children under the age of five to raise uh, children without now, without their mother. And it's very tragic and sad. So we're going to begin our service tonight with a, a minute to think about her and to pray for her family, for her husband and children and her, her mom and brother and sister. Um, and then, so you know, there's a uh, visitation service on uh, Friday night from 5 to 8 at Edina Community Lutheran Church. And then on Saturday, there is a service at Central Lutheran, uh, our big cathedral church downtown, because we anticipate it'll be a very large service at 11 a.m. Saturday. Uh, if you're interested in carpooling or if you can give somebody a ride, uh, if you could be in the West parking lot at 930, um, we'd appreciate you uh, offering a ride or being there, but uh, you can carpool. Uh, just be aware that the tr parking is a little tricky in that area. There's a lot of construction going on. You might want to uh, check and see where the best parking is for that. So I invite you now to turn your hearts to God and to uh, remember the promise that we have in the gospel of eternal life. And in the midst of our grief, we, can, we can't even rejoice and know that uh, as sad as it is, uh, Stephanie is with God and she will be there. Uh, but we, we need to pray for her family. So if we could just for a moment begin our service with silence. Oh, oh. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who fashions us, the one who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. of all life. We confess that we have not allowed your grace to set us free. We fear that we are not good enough. We hear your word of love freely given to us, yet we expect others to earn it. We turn the church inward rather than moving it outward. Forgive us, stir us, reform us to be a church powered by love willing to speak for what is right and act for what is just and seek the healing of your whole creation. Amen. God, hear, God hears our cry and sends the spirit to change us and to empower our, our lives in the world. Our sins are forgiven. God's love is unconditional and we are raised up as God's people who will always be made new in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. to God in the highest and peace, peace to God's people. Glory to God in the highest and peace, peace on earth. Let every mountain shout the glory of our God. All creatures lift their hearts and praise God's holy name. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages you've transformed sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your cause to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about Jesus and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now this woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Jesus said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. The Gospel of the Lord. So I'd like to uh, introduce to you a very special friend of mine. This is Clara. She is our nine-year-old cockapoo. She's half cocker spaniel and, and half poodle, which means she's a mutt. She's not a purebred. But Clara, she, she's the sweetest jo dog you could ever want to meet, even though she has a few strange quirks. One of the things she likes to do is to go into all of our bedrooms and find socks. And she gathers them up, and she puts them in her toy basket. And then when one of us comes home, she hears us coming in the driveway or in the garage or walking up the sidewalk. She runs and gets a sock, and she greets us at, her, at the door with her tail wagging like crazy, as though she was presenting us with a fresh kill. She's so proud of herself. But I think the most notable thing about her uh, is that she, likes, she just likes to eat. I mean, what dog doesn't? But she is obsessed with eating, and it doesn't matter what's going on at any moment, how much fun she's having, what, what she's doing to have fun. If she hears someone go into the kitchen, she hears a cupboard door open or a pantry door, or she hears the rattling of some packaging being open, she'll come screaming. She'll just stop what she's doing, and she will sit there and stare at you and stare at you and stare at you as though she's willing you to drop something on the floor. It drives me crazy. I mean, it's just, we, even though we don't feed her from the table, she'll just sit there and stare, stare and stare. And, and you're trying to eat, you're trying to ignore her, but there's this little face staring up at you. And uh, every once in a while I get so mad, I just look down at her and I say, you know, your Jedi mind tricks won't work on me. And she just keeps staring and staring. And then sometimes I'll put my plate on the ground and let her, let her clean it up. Because... We're not supposed to feed her. She needs to lose a couple pounds, the vet says. So we're trying not to. But apparently that Jedi mind trick <laughs> works. Because uh, we all seem to have a weak spot for that little face. Well, in our gospel reading for tonight, we see Jesus traveling way up north in the land of Tyre. It's up way up north, north of his hometown of Nazareth. He's far from his home. He's out looking for lost sheep. Lost sheep. Looking for his own people, people who have lost their way or need healing or need to be brought back to God. And so he's out looking for them. And while he's there, he meets this very desperate woman with a special needs child. It says she's Syrophoenician, which means she's half Syrian and half Phoenician, which means she's a half-breed. Being a half-breed in those days meant she really didn't fit in anywhere. People were, stayed with their own kind in those days, and if you were a half-breed, you probably were ostracized by both sides of the family. So she probably didn't have much support. She probably was poor, probably was single, and she had this sick daughter to take care of. And there's nothing more powerful in this world than a mom with a sick child. So she has this encounter with Jesus, and it's a very surprising encounter because Jesus talks to her in a way that we never see anywhere else. She comes to him, and in the other gospel accounts, it says that the disciples were trying to keep her away, and she kept screaming and kept pursuing. So she won't give up. We don't get that in this reading, but she doesn't give up, and she finally falls to her knees at his feet to beg him. And Jesus tells her, no, uh, my blessings are only for the purebred Jews. 
And it's strange because Jesus has helped Gentiles before several times. Why not now? Why would he talk to the woman this way? And even more surprisingly, he refers to her as a dog. And nowhere do you see Jesus using language like that to talk to a woman or anyone, really, who's down on their luck. He's always been respectful. So this is out of character for Jesus. So you have to wonder, why would he push this woman so hard through such a humbling and difficult process before giving her what she was asking for, before what she wanted and needed? You wonder, was it, you know, because Jesus wanted her to make this, this demonstration of faith that she gives, you know, this statement about crumbs falling under the children's table, which impressed Jesus? Or was it to make the point that the Gospels make in several places that faith, when, it's, when we're persistent in faith, it's always rewarded, never give up, ask, seek, and knock, if we want our prayers ask, answered? There's one occasion where Jesus comes to his disciples and they were trying to heal a man and weren't able to do it. And Jesus heals the man. And later they ask Jesus, why couldn't we heal him? And he says, because you have so little faith. Because you have so little faith. He said, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move over here and it would move. With faith the size of a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you which is a pretty amazing statement. It's a statement that has bugged me as a pastor and as a follower of Jesus. I've struggled with it. If we have enough faith, nothing will be impossible for us. If we have enough faith, and that's been a source of pain and struggle ever since Jesus said it. Sometimes it gets used as a weapon. You know, why didn't it happen? Well, you didn't have enough faith, obviously. So what is enough faith, and how do we get that? I would like to have the power to have nothing be impossible for me, wouldn't you? What did Jesus mean? For the last two weeks, all of us here at TLC, not just here, but across the Twin Cities, and even across the country, and I would say probably around the world in places, we prayed like dogs for Pastor Stephanie. We begged at the feet of Jesus. And we said, please heal her, spare her life. For those of you who don't know, Pastor Stephanie, I mentioned at the beginning of the service, it was my privilege to work with her. She was only 38 years old. She had a husband, three young children. And it's so tragic that she would die. And it seemed very reasonable to ask God to bring her back. And so we begged, please, Lord, save her, bring her back to life, make her well. We begged and we begged, we pleaded and hoped, didn't we? I know you did, but she died. She died, and it seems so wrong and so cruel and so unjust. How are we to understand this kind of a loss? One of the things that came to mind for me um, was an experience I had while doing CPE at a hospital during my training as a pastor. CPE means clinical pastoral education. And uh, pastors in training have to go through uh, months of uh, clinical work and they go out to hospitals or clinics and, and they go out and they visit people and they talk about what's going on and they try to get into conversations about faith and uh, talk about where God is in, their, in, in people's struggles. And, and if they want, uh, and oftentimes you pray with people. But part of the educational process of that is to go back to your group, to the other students, and you have an instructor, and you talk about how your visits went, and you talk about what, what was awkward and what went well, and where did you see God in these visits. It's a time that really shapes your faith, and it challenges your faith, and uh, it pushes you. It, it's very formative. We were gathered one afternoon after some visits, and one of the pastors in our group had reported that she visited a man who had had a, a severe spinal injury, and he was told there was no chance that he would ever walk again. There was no medical way that he could ever walk again. His spine was so broken. So the student who visited him asked him when she was leaving, do you want me to pray? And he said, yes. And she said, what do you want me to pray for? And he said, I want to pray that I will walk again. And so she felt like maybe what you need to do is realize that there's other kinds of healing that can happen. You can make peace with brokenness. You can make peace with your limitations. I mean, that's another kind of healing, isn't it? And so they had that conversation, and she wanted to try to help him get over 
through his denial about his situation and, and uh, thought that was being very pastoral and therapeutic. And so she brought that back to the group. But, but the guy said, no, no, I want to walk again. I want you to pray that I'll walk again. And so she said, I had a real hard time praying for that. But I did. But she, her prayer was something like, Lord, we pray that he'll walk again. But if he doesn't, we pray that he'll, he'll make peace with his circumstances. And so she brought that back to the group. And we were all talking it over. And we all kind of agreed that that was, you know, the right thing to do. She, she, she did that right. And as we were bouncing that around, our instructor, our professor chimed in and said, what is wrong with you people? Where's your faith? And we were all like, what? What are you talking about? She said, that man is going to walk again. He is. If not in this life, then in the next. And we were all kind of like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> kind of forget about, we kind of forget about that eternal life thing. We kind of think life is just this long. But it's, it's way longer. And we only have this narrow perspective. But the gospel changes our perspective. And helps us to know that whatever we go through this life, it's just a temporary thing. And that man is going to walk again. He may even walk again in this life. That's certainly a possibility. But he will walk again. And we have that faith. And so it was a reminder that God doesn't always answer the prayers the way we want. But God always answers our prayers. God always answers our prayers. We prayed Stephanie would be healed, that she would be saved, that she would live. We begged for it. And you know what? God answered those prayers. She is healed. She is saved. She's alive. I have no doubt of that. So no, we may not get the answers we want. We may not get them when we want them. But when we pray... We get what we ask for, and I would argue that we get stuff even better than what we ask for. Way better. And we may not see it at the moment, certainly not in this situation, where we stand, but I guarantee you one day we will. One day we will understand this, and we will realize how very well those prayers were indeed answered. So in the meantime, we have work to do as God's people, and that is to pray and to beg for God to do things. And tonight we'd like to especially pray for Stephanie's family and for all those who have lost dear ones and for all those who need our prayers. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our strength and our only hope, we gather again like dogs at your table to beg for your crumbs. Give peace and comfort and assurance and strength and hope to Paul, to Madeline, August, Miles, and Elizabeth, to Tim and her extended family and friends. We pray for the Lamovic family, for the loss of Kathy's father, John, and for those we name before you now. Thank you, God, for answering our prayers. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn that we're going to sing is very appropriate when we think of Pastor Stephanie as she was all about welcoming and inclusion and helped our congregation to become a reconciling in Christ congregation. So let us sing All Are Welcome. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place for saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built on hopes and dreams and visions, rocks of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love.
and a symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water. Let us now give with joy. Precious Lord Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to light. Take my hand, precious love, lead me home. When my way grows dreary, precious love, linger near. When my life is almost gone.
Please stand as you're able. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new life in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us sing the prayer that Jesus taught. table. These are the gifts of the God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. side after receiving communion if you uh, would like to receive prayer uh, for yourself or for anyone that any concern that you may have tonight uh, prayers are available from the pastors this evening I'm gonna get you things you make beautiful things 
comes out of the dust. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and keep you forever in his grace. Let us pray. Holy and compassionate God, in bread and wine you give us gifts that form us to be humble and courageous even in the midst of great loss. May your words come to life in our serving, in our witness, and in our love and support for one another. May we speak a voice of healing, comfort, and justice to all who hurt, to all who mourn, through Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Before we receive the blessing, just a couple of logistical things for a confirmation gang and the peer ministry gang. Uh, we will all stay in here at seven o'clock uh, from 7 to 7.15, we're going to meet the uh, confirmation teachers for this uh, year and, uh, and just get oriented a little bit. And then small groups will go off following that. There's, it's the first night of small groups tonight. Uh, so that's where peer ministers and uh, confirmants and small group leaders will go from 7.15 to 8 o'clock. And parents are invited to join me and Ben 
in the East Fellowship Hall at 7.15, uh, where we will kind of give an orientation for the year, do a little question and answer, uh, and tell you about some of the ways that, uh, some of the hopes we have, and hear some of your hopes for the coming year. So that's what's ahead tonight. Am I missing any other logistics, Ben? Is that good? All right, thanks. Let us stand and receive God's blessing. Now may God, creator of all things, who speaks reformation into being, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, who raises the dead, and the Holy Spirit, living voice, who calls and enlightens the church, bless you now and forever. Amen. in confirmation and then come forward. Don't go in peace. So please, please come forward now, everybody. 